Hi. 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 The yellow paper is for any ideas you have to improve the service. Um, just keep them on the table as you need. And the white one here is for next month. If you have any thoughts or questions that you get tonight, just, you know, ask them. And tonight, we're going to do interviews by John Boss, and he's the man to camera over there. And we are going to show them during the service next week. So, um, so next month. That's what I meant. Calm down. It's okay. Okay. So now it's time for relax and worship. And um, so our next song actually is He Rain. And I hope you guys are going to talk about the technology that you guys use day in and day out. And so tonight, we're going to celebrate God's love. And there's a green sheet in front of you. And really for our teenagers, how do you celebrate God's love? This is for our teens and junior teens. I want you to think about as we play this next video, is how do you celebrate God's love? When and how and why? And that will be our study tonight. It's our topic study. This service is designed for you guys. And so we're really thankful for our teams that have helped us set this up. And so we want your input as well. What we're going to do now is that one of the neat things here at Trinity is that we do videos, our homemade videos. And so we do this every month. And so this is just to kick off tonight. And then we want you to think of a topic um, that we'll share with you at the end. And we want to interview you what you think about this topic. But this was a couple Sundays ago. So let's hit the lights. And this is uh, the topic is how do people celebrate God's love? So how do you guys celebrate God's love? We celebrate God's love by loving everybody. What a song. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so how do you celebrate God's love? I love to sing for God. That is groovy. Yeah. I like that. Everything I can sing. <laughs> That's how I am too. Because we do it for God. Yes. How do you celebrate God's love? With service to others. Thank you. Okay, so how do you celebrate God's love? Um, through worship, through prayer. Yes. That's exactly how you're supposed to do it. Thank Good job. You. <laughs> how do you celebrate God's love? I say hallelujah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So, how do you celebrate God's love? Through music, just like you do. And I'm a hugger, so I hug a lot of people and oh, and give them that good, I love God, God is good hug every day. Everybody deserves that. So. Yep. Yes. Whatever. Yes. Thank I like you. it. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> hug. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. How do you celebrate God's love? I uh, treat everybody equal. Uh, it's not... It's not uh, the color of your skin that makes you a great person. It's what's in your heart. You have to remember, black and white, the only difference is the color of the skin. How do you celebrate God's love? I play the organ. And I, I, how do I celebrate God's love? Every day I'm, I'm very happy that I'm able to get up in the morning and have my breakfast and walk. And <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> so how do you celebrate God's love, Kelly? Trying to uh, lock out time to be with you. That's good. I, I like that answer. It's a hard job. It is a hard job. I agree with that. I agree. That was really good. I like that answer. Thank you. Thank you. How do you celebrate God's love? By yeah, sharing it with others. And give it your time. Yeah. You share God's love with others about God. Uh, God's gift, Jesus Christ, and you're sharing, uh, you're expressing God's love. Thank you. How do you celebrate God's love? By praying, because it's necessary and because I know He listens. Well, thank you. How do you celebrate God's love? Um, in a lot of ways, by bringing my grandkids to church and, um, let's see, by reading His Word, coming to church myself, and sharing His love with others. Thank you. We celebrate God's love. We share our love with other people and we smile 
And we love to give yeah. gifts to people that make their day. Yeah, and make people stay. Thank you. Well, there's something on the teams tonight, in our junior teams, is when do you sell So I'm just going to pop. This is your message. So we'll just wait until you guys let me know when do you sell it. I have all night. In fact, I have tomorrow off, so I'm going to stay here all day. All right, let me see something. Every day. Okay. All right, why? What's this why do you sell it? All right, God, praise us and Jesus saved us. When do you really celebrate? Think about times that you celebrate. Well, I celebrate when I'm praying and when I'm at church. Because, like, obviously that's just a good time to do that. And, you know, you should be celebrating every day. But, yeah, yeah, that's my answer. All right, cool. Anybody else? I want you to think really deep down. When's the last time you really celebrate? And these are all great, you know, answers for worship, prayer. But I want you to think about tonight is when did the last time you really had, maybe you even did a little happy dance. Because something happens. Tonight we're going to take a look at something that's valuable, something that's loved, and something that was missing. And those three things were lost. And boy, when they're found, People got excited. We're going to grab your Bibles if you will. Let's go to Luke 15. And we're going to have what's called the Lost Chapter. And so here is the first story. Something that is love gone missing. Okay. Again. Okay, so this is called the Parable of the Lost Sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man will go to the person and eats with them. Then Jesus told them, told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joys, joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not. Great reading. But think about it. Let's start with the sheep tonight. How many of you have pets? Raise your hand if you have a pet. All right. Let me find out what pets do you have. How many of you have dogs? Raise your hand if you have dogs. Okay. Cats? Okay. Put them down. Birds? Any other unique pets you have in your house? Yes, we do. We have a unique pet. A sugar glider. A sugar glider. Have you ever heard of a sugar glider? This was the coolest thing, the coolest animal. She got it, Sarah, bought it in North Dakota. How small is it? And what does a sugar glider do? She can, she has, a, she's like a, she's got to be from the Bat family, right? Marsoul. I can't even say it. <laughs> so, well, this is the coolest, you have to bring it to one of the users. Yeah, it's it. You have it here? Yeah. Gee, is it here? Oh, uh, can we it? He has around his neck. First time ever to use service. We have a danger. Any rabies shots or anything? Like that, 
And you look at how valuable, first of all, we are to each other in our pets and how valuable God is to us. And he loves us so much that if one sheep takes off, boy, he'll go and find us. There is a, a cute little story about a student, a farm kid going to class, a new teacher was there and was teaching about math and, and numbers. It says, if you have 12 sheep and one takes off or goes over the fence or the hole, how many sheep do you have left? And that student goes, well, none. Oh, no, the teacher says, no, there's 11. No, you don't know sheep. If one goes, what's going to happen? Yeah. They're all going to take off. And that's like us, too, is that we're innocent. Our animals are innocent. They don't know, but if there's an opening, many of them will take off to adventure out into whatever they're searching for. So here, celebration, the many times, how many of you have had an animal that have, that has gone astray and has come back? What did you do when they came back? You celebrate. Yeah, you think when something has returned, something valuable, something personal, is that when you start really celebrating, is when they have been found, when that animal of yours or a creature in a night pouch returns. This is powerful. This is cool. When you think about when you really celebrate is when something valuable, something loved has come. Awesome. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and, and neighbors together and is rejoicing with me, for I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of angels, of God over one sin who repent. All right. How many of you have lost money? Huh? We've all, we've all lost money. All right. I remember I was in college in Irvine, California, and I just got paid. So I had $100 in my bill. Went to the gas station. What happened to the wallet? Somehow slipped out. Couldn't find it. Also, I got a call the next day from that gas station. They said, we got your wallet. I was so excited. But what was missing? The money. But there's been other times where we found something that's material and valuable. I remember working at Harkins years ago at Chris Down in Phoenix, and I found a wallet. And he had some money in it. But I didn't spend it, gave it to the manager. You know what he did to us? The guy that came back, he couldn't believe his money was in there. He bought us all dinner back. Just to say thank you. Something valuable was missing. We all search, whatever it is, whether it's money, whatever, a car and a parking, great parking garage, maybe something valuable with videos or your music or a special number. What happens when you find it? You do what? You sell it in your own unique Celebration. We celebrate birthdays, we celebrate anniversaries, we celebrate the end of the school year. Some of you are crazy enough to celebrate when school starts. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but really, the parents here tonight are celebrating. But you know, when you really celebrate is when you think something has gone wrong or bad. And maybe it has. But the outcome, whenever it came, became positive and encouraging. And then that's when you sell it. What more story? Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, all he had set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to eat pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. All right, so here's the first son. The first son says, I'm out of here, I want to do my own thing, and he takes off, and he finds out that life is a lot harder. How many of you like to leave your home tonight? <laughs> but you know what? Many of us come back to the home. It's hard out there. It's difficult. We want to be like 
we love to have inheritance, but you know what we do a lot of times? Is that as, at our age, we spend it quickly. And here this young son was out, out of control, and now he's feeding on what? Not pizza, but a pig's food. Verse 17. All right. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fat calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and was alive again. He was lost and is found, so they began to celebrate. Boy, the father could have been so upset. You just wasted all your inheritance. Now you want to come back and live off the land once again, off of my house? But God was so excited. The Heavenly Father, like us, when we get lost, he's so excited to have us back. There's a fourth loss here. Someone who has enjoyed everything. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fat calf because he was safe, because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate my friends. When this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you killed the fat calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad, because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Thank you, Natalie. When do you celebrate? Tonight, we these teams picked out this theme, celebrating God's love. Sometimes, we're a love pet that just innocently can go straight away. We just see family or friends or doing things that we just wander into difficulties. We have a gospel, incredible, a Savior that goes after us. Sometimes we're a misplaced coin. It wasn't our fault in the situation that we're in today. There's no way that we could have done this. But due to the circumstances around us, we become a lost coin. But here comes the gospel once again. Someone who continues to search for us. I always loved it. I, have, I didn't have those incredible creatures, Sarah, that you had. I had hamsters and gerbils growing up. And they would sneak out. And I'd go to bed, I'd be crying, and I'd go to bed at night. But my mom would stay in the middle of the kitchen with a flashlight. And she would stay and just wait. Because she knew eventually <laughs> that animal would come to the kitchen where the food is. That's what our Heavenly Father does. He wakes up for us. He wakes us. We're so valuable and loved by Him. And then the two brothers. One who just wants to get out of the house. Want to do his own thing, independence. But it's not ready. And falls apart. Another brother can't see the joy right in front of him. He has everything right in front, and he's lost. He's blinded. When do you really celebrate? Tonight's theme is not, yeah, celebrate when we do well on a test, or you get your paycheck, or whatever, those little things that come in. But when do you really celebrate is when we're lost, and we become found through Jesus Christ. This is our purpose of having a new service, that you guys will help us with topics and, and interesting discussions and videos to connect with each other. You guys are in a world of yourselves and what's happening. And only you, not us, older adults, can, uh, can help you. But Jesus can. To come with the music you pick and the dramas and the videos you make can reach out to each other because first, you're valuable like a coin. Second, your love, like an animal, a pet. But thirdly, you're going to be missed when you're away from God's presence. And He's there to give you that great joy. So when do you sell? This time now, we're at, for our confession forgiveness, we have a cool video we're going to share with you.
that we can lift up together as a family. Um, I'm just going to open it up. Anything to thank the Lord or a concern um, that we can give. All right, more than five people showed up tonight, and so we thank the Lord for that, yes? I'm thankful the words matched up with the videos. <laughs> that, it worked out well, man. It was awesome. It was cool. Any others? We're celebrating your health, Kirsten. Gio. Did you bring your golf ladder with you today? No, I did not. Oh. <laughs> Stuff. We like to have show and tell here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm body parts. Nobody hurts. Let's throw it in the chat. Any other? Yes, my grandpa, Dennis Voss, is seriously ill. And uh, we're trying to find ways to help him out. He's got to keep his heart fluid. So we'll lift him up. Any others? Anybody have any big tests this week? All right, next Saturday, Josh will lift up. You guys have some tests coming up?
talk about the youth service and other activities as well. So join us when you can. And as you leave, um, our next service is September 15th. If you have ideas for music, let us know. Um, if you um, also, we have John with the camera back here. And our, our topic is, um, as, as is she here, think about before you leave so he can interview you. Maybe we'll have Mandy and maybe if you be back there and ask the question, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? And that's our topic next month. And if you have a thought, any thought, uh, please share that. And that will be part of our topic. You guys, thank you for coming. Stay as long as you want. Get some more, steal some more M&Ms. And, um, and just greet each other. Thank you for coming today.